Uh, welcome to the Village of Lake Bluff Joint Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals regular meeting on June 19th, 2024. Uh, if we could have call to order and roll call, please, Ms. Gable. Yep. Can call to order the Village of Lake Bluffs Joint Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals regular meeting for Wednesday, June 19th. And we'll start with a roll call vote. Member Danley? Here. Member Fisher? Here. Member Miller? Here. Member Russell? Here. Member Sorensen is here. Um, <laughs> Member Toll is absent, and Chair Peters. Here. Great. We have a quorum. Excellent. All right. The quorum of the PCZBA is physically present at the meeting. In regards to Member Sorensen, a notice was received by a member of the PCZBA in accordance with village policy. And Member Sorensen will be deemed authorized to attend the meeting electronically unless a motion objecting to the member's electronic attendance is made, seconded, and approved by two-thirds of the members of the PCZBA physically present at the meeting. If no such motion is made, then Ann's request to attend the meeting electronically shall be deemed approved. Is there such a motion? Hearing none. Member Sorensen can participate virtually. Agenda item number two. Uh, Non-agenda items and visitors public comment time. Uh, Courtney, do you wanna yeah. give a preliminary statement on that please? Uh, yeah, so anyone may provide public comment about pickleball during public comment at this time, but please know it will not be considered for purposes of the public hearing. If any comment about pickleball is made tonight, this board is not able to consider it for purposes of the pickleball hearing. Uh, if you would like to make public comment about pickleball, that can be considered by the board for purposes of the public hearing. Please feel free to come to the continued hearing June, July 17th uh, and make comments during the public hearing uh, when it is back open. Thank you, Ms. Willett. Um, we allocate 15 minutes during this part of the uh, meeting for public comment time. Uh, we limit the public comments to three minutes and uh, we're willing to address anything on the, not on the agenda, uh, but for the uh, pickleball concern. Is there anything remote or anybody present that wants to provide public comment? Hearing none, uh, agenda item number three, consideration of the May 15, 2024 regular meeting minutes. All the commissioners I trust have had an opportunity to review the minutes. Any proposed revisions or other changes? Just two little ones on page one. Um, Courtney's name, I don't know if you spell it with the ITS or ETS, but one oh, or the other okay. is, is incorrect. And then um, seeking to make public comment attend the July PCZBA. That may be true now, but last month we were telling people to come to the June PCZBA. So okay. that needs to be changed. Thanks. Thank you, Member Russell. Um, any other proposed revisions or other recommendations? Hearing none, is there a motion, please? I'll make a motion. Approve the minutes as stated with George's additions. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, a voice vote? Voice vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Minutes are adopted. Okay, agenda item number four. Uh, Ms. Gable, if you'd like to uh, address this, please. Yep. The Lake Bluff Park District has requested that this public hearing item be continued to the July 17th, 2024 PCZBA meeting, which is within their ability to request as the applicant. And the village's consultant is con has conducted a sound study of both Blair and Artesian Park, both of which will be available before the next meeting. Okay. Um. We will need a formal motion internally to continue the meeting. Mm -hmm. I move to continue. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, could we have a vote please? Member Danley? Aye. Member Fisher? Aye. Member Miller? Aye. Member Russell? Aye. Member Sorensen? Aye. And Chair Peters? Aye. Motion passes. Motion carries. 
All right, agenda item number five, staff report. If you could present that, uh, Ms. Gable, please. Yes. The owner of 665 Maple Avenue, Mr. Mike Busio, and his architect, Mr. Rob Douglas, approached village staff about the possibility of constructing a detached garage on the subject property in a specific location that was chosen due to the location of trees on the property. And although 665 Maple Avenue is zoned E1, it is considered an irregular lot for which a uh, section of the zoning regulations states that required setback determinations for principal and accessory structures shall be determined based on the setback requirements for immediately adjacent lots at each location along the common lot line. And as both properties to the west have 30 foot setbacks along the common lot line, the front setback for 665 Maple Avenue would be 30 feet. And um, as proposed, the detached garage would require a variation from a section in the zoning regulations, which states that no accessory building or structure shall be permitted in any required front yard, the front yard being inclusive of all of the space between the house and the front lot line. Um, as this is a unique situation, Mr. Busio and Mr. Douglas have requested an informal review by the PCZBA prior to submitting a full variation application. And Rob, if you wanna um, add anything to that or Mike. Well, good evening. Um, yeah, we felt it would be best to come here for um, more of a advisory review, um, trying to determine really what's the best path. Um, I don't know if you have any graphics you can put up, but um, when you see the lot, you'll see the rather unique situation that we're dealing with here. Um, I assume you've got drawings in the packet there. Um, I didn't include a plata survey, which I probably should have, but the, um, the driveway coming up from Maple Avenue up to the front yard of the property, that length is 180 feet from uh, the, uh, the street or from the property line that engages the street. And then the 30 foot setback is then applied when you get to um, the lot as you can see on this drawing here that I provided. I also have um, from the surveyor able to determine the uh, table land uh, of the property um, because <coughs> the light green area is um, basically <coughs> a ravine and then the dash line off of that edge of the ravine is the 10 foot setback as uh, stated in the uh, zoning ordinance for ravines. Um, and we have some practical challenges here. Um, where the garage is being uh, considered <coughs> is currently an asphalt pad that uh, has a basketball court on it, um, or a half court, I should say. And um, so it's an area that um, would be probably the least um, impactful on the property, particularly with the trees that are on that property. Um, but when you look at the zoning ordinance and how it applies to this rather unique property, um, that 30 foot setback really is um, a challenge. So we thought it would be good to bring it here for at least an advisory review to see just what's the best way to approach this? Do we do a, a zoning variance or is there with um, ravine properties, um, maybe some kind of text amendment uh, modification to the zoning ordinance because of ravine conditions? Um, that's really kind of an open subject and we're really seeking some feedback and input from you on What's the best way to do this? Um, and the garage itself is basically uh, mirroring the, uh, the existing building there with um, 
clapboard siding with uh, a cedar shingle in the gable, which uh, is what the current house has. So it'll be very much uh, reflecting the same architecture of the building and painted the same color uh, in that gray tone that the main house is in. So, um, you know, there's, I guess, you know, if it comes to a, a variance, I mean, there's definitely some hardship because of the formation of this lot. Um, and it, it's, I guess, really a lot in depth kind of um, condition here, but it's unusual and we thought we should bring it here for your input so we can better understand what's the best path to take. And I don't know if, Mike, you wanna add anything? Um, um, but you might have to come up here for the mic, so. Yes. So I am uh, Mike Bushio uh, from 665 Maple Avenue, and uh, I would just, I'm sorry, if you can leave that up there, Claire. Yeah, um, would it be helpful to have like a zoning map so you can see the other properties kind of around oh, it? Oh, yeah, I was just gonna point that out on that yeah. one if you wanted me, me to. I was just going to show where the houses are. Share that really quick, and this might be a little better. I guess that's it there. Yeah. So, um, if I could step away for a second. So this is uh, this is Maple. Uh, this is North Avenue. This is Maple going north and south. And this is our property and our house um, here. So, you know, it, it comes down to a point uh, between Lily and Dell and the, and the southern ravine to the north. And then actually kind of goes down you know, to a, a race truck there. Um, these are the houses in front that are you know, north facing. They are facing Maple. Um, so their backyards are here and here. Our backyard is, is here, I would say. The basketball court uh, route, I guess, would be right about here. That we're talking about putting, uh, using as a logical place to put up a freestanding garage. The house has just a two-car garage now. And in the spirit of the car show tomorrow, I have a car coming to the house. So my wife uh, wants me not to have the cars just on the driveway. Um, so I was hoping to be able to construct a separate garage, but then you know we have these these issues with the lot, as Rob described, this kind of unique characteristic of this lot. Who'd like to start? I have a detailed question for you, Rob. The the uh, sections that you've shown for the garage. Um, when you look quickly, it leads one to believe that the height of the garage is going to be under the standard compliance of 17 feet for a detached garage. But in reality, when you look at the fine print in your numbers, you're, you're up at at least 18.4, if not higher. And I'm wondering, if did you make a mistake in your renderings? Are you willing to have a garage um, height that um, complies with the standard rule of 17 feet from grade well, to ridge? Well, let me ask, um, when it comes to measuring height, I did it off the top of foundation and I went to the ridge. It's, uh, grade, you, it's grade to ridge. Grade the ridge? Yeah. Well, then you'd be adding six inches to it, it'd be right at 17 feet, unless you want to include the cupola too. Got, well, maybe you have a typo then. You've got, no, the two, cupola would be exempt. Maybe you've got a typo then in your drawings because it, it reads one foot 10 inches from the top of foundation down to uh, proposed grade. And proposed grade would at least be as high as existing grade. Oh, I see what is you're saying. A, is that I, a mistake? That is a, a typo, I apologize. Um, it's a six foot, a six inch um, exposed foundation edge. Um, and that is a typo, I apologize there. Um, but the, um, from the top of foundation to the ridge is 16 foot, six inch. Okay. Well, um, if it, and I, I can verify that for you, um, as we get on, cause we don't want to look for a height variation. Um, we're matching the same, um, 
slope as the main house. Uh, so that's uh, really how we came to the 16 foot six inch off top of foundation. But if we add six inches in there, <coughs> we'll make sure it's below the 17 foot height. Okay. I mean, this is schematic design. We are not, we don't have construction documents. Okay, what well, just so. changes my opinion of the, of the proposed project if, if you were gonna seek a, uh, a height variation for the garage because um, people build these standard two-car garages all the time and 99% <coughs> of the population can comply with the rule and I, I would have a little bit of consternation if you were gonna ask for maybe two feet more or something, but no. if, you're, if that wasn't the intent and it's a typo, um, then that's, that's great if we're gonna be able to call it and analyze it as a 17 foot height. I actually had a little bit less severe interpretation of your proposed project than the current village attorney and staff did. I know you probably don't believe that, because, <laughs> but I, I felt that the irregular, that this is an irregular lot and the language in our code it's, you know, specifically says that for accessory structures, the setback shall be determined um, based upon the adjacent lots at each location along the common lot line. So 661 Maple, which is the lower of the two yellow boxes there, if someone, someone tomorrow would be allowed to build a 17 foot high garage within five feet of that back property line there, if they so choose as a matter of right. Um, so I, I really don't have a problem even the problem with the more severe interpretation is you are going to have to get a, a uh, front yard setback variation. Um, so, but, uh, but I, I don't personally have a problem as long as the garage height is 17 feet. I can guarantee you it will not exceed 17 feet. Okay. I'll put my hand on a, on a Bible with that one. Okay. So uh, I, I apologize for the, uh, the typo there. No, thank you, Member Russell. Uh, other commissioners? So can you explain the setback requirement for this particular? It's 30 feet in the front. Is 180 feet to the driveway to the front. How does the setback? I mean, I'm confused as far as this. Yeah, so for uh, this type of lot, the setback would be taken at the... Um, can find the exact adjacent property wording okay. at the basically where the driveway ends and the rest of the property okay so it's from where the driveway ends right I see. and uh it would be taken from the setbacks of the properties to the west which as we noted is a little different because those would be rear yard setbacks and this would be interpreted to be a front yard right. setback. Uh, however, it would be 30 feet um, either way. And so the variation that would be sought would be for the uh, requirement that accessory structures are not allowed in okay, the front so the, yard. So there's no, uh, there's no problem with the setback? As far as it going into the setback, it's the front yard. Sure. Is the is the is the key okay? Have you uh, talked to any neighbors about the two neighbors that would be affected by the garage? Um, have we talked to any neighbors? We've had preliminary discussions with uh, the coloshes there on the bottom uh, uh, south or yeah south property there. Um, as Rob said, we're just kind of in preliminary design, you know, enough that we could present it, you know, to you and others. Um, the collages, you know, right now are looking at a basketball hoop and a slab of asphalt. And so they're kind of, we're thinking this would actually be uh, nicer to them. Um, we have a lot of, you know, this obviously doesn't show it, but you know, we're in the woods back here and a lot of screening already there. So for, you know, other than a few months in the winter, they probably won't even see the structure um, itself. And their line of sight, actually, you can see, goes you know kind of to this to the south of our property as they look down that ravine. Um, 
Similarly, the, the family to the, in the north house adjacent to us, um, their backyard really orientate, orients towards the north, looking down that north ravine for their visibility. Um, and the structure, if you can see the pink, that's our driveway going back, as Rob said, that long length, this, the, 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 the uh, garage structure would be uh, to the, I'm sorry, to the south of the driveway. So it's really uh, not as impactful to them. They won't, you know, they have no really sight to it. Um, I've mentioned it to them as well, and he was, he was okay. You know, he said, you know, let me know if you need any help with us with any kind of variance or anything. There's a very mature um, vegetation, arborvitae type, um, I couldn't tell from across the ravine, but that runs along your west lot line south of the ravine that almost seemed to me that your neighbor on the southerly lot there wouldn't even be able to see the new garage. Yeah, there's- Is the intention to keep, I think that's all your vegetation from what I can yes, tell. Yeah, um, we, we planted a lot of arborvitae. Is it your intention is to keep all that heavy screening? Yes, and okay. in, in, in the position, since we were looking for a site, the, the existing basketball court, um, you know, does not have trees on it, obviously, so that became kind of a natural site for us not to disturb. There's some very big, you know, legacy oaks on the property, too, that we want to protect and other large trees, um, as well as, you know, make sure we're, you know, obviously not close to the ravine and, ma and maintaining those proper setbacks for the ravine. So um, it became a logical place with the least impact for anybody and actually, you know, perhaps a enhancement to what they're looking at now. Just for clarification, uh, the arborvitae that uh, George is referencing is along this area right here. Uh, heavy stand of oaks around this perimeter, and there is some new plantings in here. But you know, this is a little misleading because the ravine is edges right about here, so their their view corridor is really coming down this way, and this one, their view corridor is this direction. So yeah, um, but. I Excuse me, but I, I know that house pretty well, 661, and any time you put a 17-foot, you know, slab elevation up, it is going to block that view. I would only hope um, that you can work on continuing some landscape, and I love the idea. I mean, I, I'm in favor of it. I'm just concerned that we put up structures and we're not um, sensitive to the the heritage trees, making sure that they're gonna be okay and adding landscape. Cause I think, think you could, maybe we can have that written in that no, just to ensure. That's a, that's a really good point um, that uh, we, we are extremely respectful of the environment we're in. Um, we uh, remodeled this house three years ago when we moved here and uh, did extensive uh, all native landscaping on the whole property. So we planted, you know, lots of native shrubs, bushes, and trees to enhance what was already there. But I, I really do not think that the Kolosh's view um, is gonna be impacted by this to the lake. What they're looking at right now is a basketball court and then the front of our, our house, mm -hmm. the, the peak of our one side of our house. Um, if they look at that angle, um, and so the, if I can step away again for a second, the site plan for the basketball court is really going to be, and, and, and this, this is not actually, this was probably the old house down before the addition of this garage. I, I can't. Yeah, the, the house is extends southerly of what that zoning map shows. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. yeah. And so the basketball court is, is here in front of the house structure. Mm -hmm. Might further add that the the coalitions to the south, um, they do have a a shed structure in that northeast corner of their property too, yeah. I believe. Yeah. I was going to mention that, and honestly, I think the two can work harmoniously together. I think you've worked hard on the landscape, so yeah, have, have they, and 
you know, it, it's definitely blending. I would just hope that, you know, keep continuing to, once you build something up, maybe perhaps bushes or trees around it would even help. Um, but I, I have no issue other than. Thank you, Ms. Danley. Uh, Ms. Fisher? Um, yeah, I think I'm fine with it. The one thing that I'd kind of like to just um, make sure in our language about it, uh, if we, as we go through it, um, that the reason for the variance is because it's a flag lot, it's E1, that kind of thing. I think sometimes people hear that we are giving a variance for a front yard setback and allowing a structure in it. I wouldn't want that kind of I'd want to be really clear that we're not doing that, um, just because I think we may have one of those coming soon, from what I'm hearing, you know, a request for a front yard setback or something. So I just want to make sure that this is pretty unique of a situation with the ravine, with the flag lot, um, and the E1 makes it a larger lot and such. So that's just one thing. And then I would be, I would encourage you to maybe get something in writing or have an attendance by the, or an email or whatever um, from the neighbors, you know, and I don't know whether that one neighbor on mountain that's like over the bridge um, has any sight line of your pro, you know, I mean, that might be another one just to let us know that they're on board indeed and stuff. So that would be helpful for me. Otherwise, I'm in favor. Yeah, Member Miller. No, I said my piece. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we still. Um, Member Sorensen? Yes, thank you. Um, well, I uh, first of all agree with my fellow commissioners. The questions that were raised were um, were also my own, so they've been covered. Um, I do appreciate that you're doing a smaller footprint instead of the basketball court, um, so that's good. But um, as was just noted, I would also love to hear from the neighbors, um, you know, people purchase these homes on ravines and there's always the hope that you'll get to have some fantastic views. So I'd like to hear from neighbors as well, but I think you're really doing a good job covering your bases and the bases and this is um, really a unique situation. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sorensen. Uh, what are the uh, proposed dimensions of the garage, Rob? Um, or approximately? The foundation is 21 four inches um, east to west and 22 feet 10 inches north south. So it's, it's not an excessive um, footprint. It sounds like what we need to do here too is to provide more landscape information. Um, I can also um, through Google Maps, uh, I can approximate the footprints of those other buildings and try to uh, identify the, their view corridors that they have from their backyards and what and how this uh, hopefully doesn't impact their sight lines that, that much. Um, but, you know, we can certainly uh, provide that additional information too. Um, and. I, I don't know if, if you had a chance to walk the site, but we'll certainly photograph it too, so that um, it's well understood, um, you know, what the landscape, existing landscape is now, and what, um, you know, uh, understory plantings that might be considered, because um, it's really more of an oak um, forest there, but with uh, Bergman, who's doing the landscape, um, you know, what the bushes are doing are really kind of a, a woodland uh, floor restoration um, under these oaks. And um, so it sounds like we should probably have some more information about all that too, as far as, you know, the edges and how we're, we're trying to screen at the same time, not block views. Um, so. I, I know we're an architectural, <coughs> view that the roof line should match the house. Is there any thoughts about maybe lowering the roof line so the sight lines aren't so so, so high to look over the garage? Um, we, we can certainly take a look at that. 
Um, I um, can't really speak for Mike on that, but I we can certainly look at it. And I think it'd be helpful if we did have some photographs because the uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I was just saying I think it would be helpful if we had some photographs to help with with your concerns there. Um, we certainly don't want to obstruct anybody's view. I mean, we're good friends, good neighbors with the Coloshes, and we've coordinated what landscaping they've done and we've done to, you know, we're on the same page in terms of what we want to do. Um, and you have a landscape company in common. Yeah, we both use there. Craig Bergman's. Um, and he's doing their house too. Yes, uh, but I don't think the site line at the peak is going to be affected by them. You know, okay. that 16 foot peak again I think that's going to be more in front of our house <clears throat> that they're already looking at which is probably another 30 feet from where this structure will be to the front of our house so I think that's more the sight line that the peak will be at no uh, from my perspective I think there was uh, you know an excellent exchange tonight uh, a lot of good questions a lot of good points um, Frankly, when I drove by this evening, I didn't see the driveway, so I must have been looking at 661 because I saw 669. And I was concerned if it was 661. Yeah. Uh, but You're welcome to come by and take a look. No, I drove thank down you. Down your, your road yesterday, I didn't know if you'd throw me out. Or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a dog. We just got a cat that's very friendly, so we're going to come back and take a look. But I, I think uh, you know, excellent ex exchange tonight, and I think a general consensus among the commissioners that we can proceed. probably, we can probably work it out. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners or? No. Appreciate the time, thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for the feedback. Um, because of its unusual characteristics, we just felt this would be a better thing to do versus just moving right forward with any sort of zoning variance. Um, it's good to get some feedback like this, so I appreciate it. You know, I think those photographs, Rob, or whatever you're contemplating, or uh, that'll that'll help us considerably. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think your I think Deb's suggestion about making this not was it your no, maybe it was your suggestion about this is not a common thing to have like a front yard garage right. is very important that this is a special. Yeah, Deborah, Deborah said that. Yeah, this is a special occasion, not occasion, but a sp special use. And we, we can make that known in the um, authorizing legislation if it decided to, to make sure that we set forth findings that it's an irregularly shaped lot, you know, both in a triangle and a flag, flag. lot. It's a mm -hmm. reverse, you know, and the ravine. code is ambiguous. <laughs> yeah, and ravine in the E1. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the code is ambiguous for the setback with the you know the lot line rear front so it's just a right um we can make sure that we include that language as well so it's I very it just clear helps, that it's you know because otherwise people absolutely. hear a piece of that and say oh my gosh we're we can look to do you know different kinds of setbacks yep. absolutely absolutely thanks no those are all excellent points and uh i think it was it was well worth the time for for everybody tonight uh agenda number six commissioner's report Excuse me, is there anything more from staff? You usually have more interesting things to say than we do. <laughs> the only thing that I would add is that um, at the next meeting, I'd expect to have more regarding our comp plan um, process. We met with Tesca today and just kind of talked about some next steps, and they're supposed to get us um, an updated timeline as well as kind of a draft for further review. Uh, and we'll have a better idea of what will be expected as far as upcoming meetings, whether or not we'll need to schedule some additional ones to really go through that along with our other projects. Um, so at the next meeting, hoping to have more uh, to share on that one. And there's no uh, interest in any of the vacant lots in town? Uh, in regards in regards to anything or <laughs> no our big lots 
that are vacant right now. Uh, Stonebridge. Stonebridge, yeah. And oh, no, anything like that? Yeah. No, nothing uh, further right now on any of those. Okay. And any um, anybody requesting PUD or ADUs or anything like that? Um, we did have somebody, no one's requested it, but we had somebody inquiring about uh, yet another aspect of the ADU code, uh, specifically about um, whether they had to meet the principal structure setbacks, which the ADUs say they do, which as we're kind of talking about some barriers that are in that ADU code, that may be another one to right. kind of explore along with the others. Um, I know we're looking to have a speaker talk about some of the um, financial uh, implications or kind of decisions that go into ADUs. And um, so just uh, another part of that discussion. Right, and I'm seeing more, more um, press about ADUs in Chicago and, you know, granny flats and things like that. So I think it's becoming maybe a little more talked about and such, but I think it helps to identify what our stumbling blocks are since we have this nice one sitting here and nobody's really approached it yet. So thanks. Mm -hmm. So if you had to give us odds, is Pickleball Paul going to be back on our agenda next month or not? So we should have the sound studies completed. Um, I think it likely would be on the agenda for the next meeting. And there's, if the, it does come back, there's no, other than general information on the comp plan, there would be no, wouldn't be an attempt to schedule a TESCA person on the same evening, would there? No. Okay. No. Because that would. Good. Agreed. Aaron, Aaron wouldn't be, I can say it because he's not here. He wouldn't be able to stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> How's the agenda look, Ms. Gable? Anything set yet? So far, it is just um, the continued public hearing. Are we contemplating 6 o'clock or staying with 7 o'clock? Um, I'd say maybe both are open, so we may be in touch about... 6 p.m. If that doesn't work for anyone, if you want to let me know. Okay, so we can explore either of those, but we're not necessarily. Um, I know last time it was a little bit bigger of a deal because we had some public hearings before it. So. Okay. And then are all the commissioners um, intending to be here in July? Good. All right. Anything else from a commissioner's report perspective? Hearing none, agenda item number seven, adjournment. Is there a motion? A motion is made. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.